I have never seen a beaver before. That is a zoo animal. Can you can you back up? Cause he don't give a shit. Hey, you're here with Ben and we're up nice and early in Berlin so that I can show you one of the most active, historical, cultural, and all around one of the best day trips in the area. What is it, I hear you ask, across the void? Well, it's Spreewald, of course, a UNESCO recognized nature reserve about 100 kilometers southeast of the city. But that description really doesn't do it justice, does it? You can't picture it in your head. You see, throughout the area of Spreewald, there are some 200 canals connecting a series of old Slavic, though mostly Sorbian and Vend villages. And to this day, they keep their language, clothing, and customs alive. My plan for the day? Well, I'm gonna paddle myself to Beer Island, which is simply a beer garden out in the middle of the canal system between a few of the different towns. Along the way, we'll have to contend with some locks that will adjust the water level between the different canal depths. Usually, they have people to operate them for you, but if we're lucky, we'll get to operate them ourselves. I'll show you how, don't worry. Then, I'm gonna get myself over to the village of Lede to check out their cultural museum and probably have another beer, honestly. Lastly, we're gonna take the long way back around to the marina itself to finish up our tour. Though I'll tell you more about how we're gonna get there when we get to the main central station. Surely we're gonna to need to rent a car to get to something so historic, right? It's gotta be out of the way. No, not at all. There's actually a train line that goes directly from Berlin to the biggest town in Spreewald called Lubenau. The ride itself also only lasts about an hour. The transportation couldn't be easier. Once we arrive, it's just a short walk, maybe a kilometer, kilometer and a half, from the main station in Lubenau to the actual Lubenau town center. From there, you're gonna be able to get to the canal marina just down a small jitty. I'll leave a map in the description below so you don't get lost. From the marina, you're gonna have two choices. You can rent your own kayak or canoe, or if you're feeling a little lazy, or perhaps just don't feel like paddling around for hours, you can actually rent yourself a tour around on a traditional punting boat. I personally will be renting my own kayak as I think it's far more fun to be nice and active, and also then you can choose exactly which stops you're gonna want to make around the canal complex. Now that you know the rundown for the day, let's get going. Alright guys, so we got off the train station, nipped by the hotel to drop off our bags and get ready for the rest of the day and now we're doing the about a kilometre, kilometre and a half walk uh, to the old town itself which is where like the canal and the little marina, I wonder if you call it a marina for canals, I don't know, uh, but essentially that's what it is, the boat place, <laughs> that's where we're heading. Uh, the journey itself only took about an hour from Berlin so super doable but it is important to note that the trains only run every hour so if you show up at the wrong time and don't check your train schedule that could be two hours, that really sucks and <laughs> is exactly what we did this morning. Terrible, you think I'd know better, but hey, sometimes you're, you're sleepy in the morning. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to that walk and I'll see you guys on the canal. So now we've got to the end of Spreestrasse. You're gonna see where the boats are, right? This is where you can find your captain, and if you're looking for someone to take you around for the day, that's it, that's your final stop. Now, if you're more like us, and you're looking to kind of get out there in your own kayak, find your own way around, follow your own map, you're gonna need to cross the bridge. That actually tripped me up the first time I was here, because I wasn't quite sure. I stood around like a real awkward tourist for a solid minute before somebody helped me out. But luckily, you're not gonna do that, because I've done it for you. After you cross the bridge, it's just a short walk through the woods, as you're gonna see, until you actually get to the dock for your own kayaks. Real easy but not completely obvious and the signage nicks so good let's go get on that boat All right, so I'm being a little bit cheeky right now and having Camille do all the paddling while I talk to you guys. So maybe we'll just chill out for a minute because I'm enjoying the free ride. Though we are moving quite slowly, move faster. Nevertheless, I'm actually doing something important. Well, I mean, talking to you guys is important. But what I'm really doing is studying the map 
because I need to figure out the fastest way to get us to Beer Island. Now, I didn't really record much of getting into the kayak or the, the purchasing of it. I'm sure you guys can figure that out. But remember, pay attention to where you picked it up on that map, which I'm gonna take a good photo of and narrate over later, because that's where you're gonna to have to drop it off and they can't help you if you get lost. So you're gonna to have to pay attention. I guess I should probably get back to paddling now, huh? Okay, so that wasn't that bad. It only took maybe an hour, hour and 15 to actually make it up to Beer Island, which is roughly on par with how long it should take. You might be able to do better since you won't have to stop and record. And once your boat is out of the water, you're ready to explore Beer Island. There's tons of outdoor seating and some indoors as well if you need a break from being outside, but honestly, I would recommend keeping it outdoors. I'm pretty starving after that little workout I've been doing, so I'm excited to go and eat. Maybe have some schnitzel, have some beer, and otherwise just actually explore the place. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, I hope you're feeling rested, but I know I am. I mean, okay, I say I'm feeling rested. I'm mostly feeling full of food. And my arms are feeling a little bit, well, my shoulders a little bit sore. Uh, you know, I don't row a lot. I don't know if you could tell, that was kind of new for me. I think it might only take about an hour to get south into Lede where they're gonna have the museum and all the other things to do. So let's just get this boat in the water and get going, huh? Alright, so we've made it to Lede. Now it took about 45 minutes to an hour. Not bad at all, really. But before I let myself have a rest, I'm gonna go and hit up that museum and check out all there is to know about this old Sorbian village. Let's go check it out. Traveling deeper through Schwewald, going south from Beer Island, we now make it to Lede. Though more specifically right now, their awesome living history Sorbian village museum. The whole place feels like somewhere that time simply forgot. Recognized as one of the oldest and most beautiful villages in Spreewald, it has only about 130 residents, directly situated on the water in 700 year old wooden houses. Some theorize that Lede resembles a 1,500 year old Venice, with fishing families living on the river islands, boats are still the main means of transportation. And that's right, that means that they're dependent on these canals for the mail, their fire brigade, and even their garbage collection. They just don't have any roads here. And this Living History Museum is just as fantastic as the village itself, featuring three Vendish farmhouses to help guests see how those in Sprewald lived in the 1800s. So let's go finish checking this out and afterwards grab a beer before you make me row again.
I thought that museum was pretty fun, really informative, and I mean, I'm kind of a nerd anyway. I love living history museums, so you knew I was gonna love it already. And then who doesn't wanna just have another chill beer by the lake? With all that done though, even though my shoulders don't feel super rested, I think it's time to get back in that kayak and do the rest of the journey. Should just be another hour. Though, and don't tell Camille, I'm pretty excited about this. The biggest lock of the day is there. I hope I get to operate it. And then after that, we'll be back in loom now. Let's go. Right, yeah, no, you're definitely gonna have to paddle yourself through there, I think. The other lock that we were at was manned. So you tip them a little bit, they've got a little basket, and you're right through, real easy. But there is a chance, especially if you're going up to Beer Island, that there might not be anybody there. So we're gonna have to operate this lock ourselves. So the whole point is that we're attempting to balance the water level of two streams in this case. So how do we operate it? Each of these lock gates has a big lever. Now what that's gonna do when you open it is there's a window under the water that you're opening and closing. If the window is open, obviously water can flow through, and if it's closed, it can't. Now using that on both gates, we're gonna be able to adjust the water level in the central chamber to raise it and lower it to match either the high stream or the low stream. First, we can determine that the central chamber is actually already at depth with the low stream. So we want to get the kayak in, should be pretty simple. We can actually just go ahead and open the door. That will allow Camille to bring the kayak in. Opening it's pretty easy, is all you got to do is pull on this bar. I feel like a, like a donkey should be doing this. Excellent. We only had to open one door because we've got a small boat, so it's not really a big deal. With our captive audience kayak down there in the central chamber, we're gonna need to close the gate that we just opened to lock her into the lock. Oh my God, so heavy. Now here's the important part. We've closed the, the actual gate itself, but those windows are still open. So if we try to level it now, the water will just flow out and it will never really rise. So we're gonna have to go and close them. I'm gonna go ahead and put them from the Alf to the Tsu position. He's actually surprisingly easy. Now that should close the windows, meaning the backside, the low side, in this case of the lock, is now completely blocked up. To match the level, we can now go over to the high side, see how much higher that is. So now if we open those windows, water should come rushing in. Let's do that now. That we're gonna do the reverse of, the Tsu, to the out position. And already, you can see the water flowing in with big bubbles. And Camille's gonna have to be careful because he's gonna blow her around. Funny anecdote though. Uh, so I've already done this before. I've done quite a few locks. I actually find it really fun. The first time I really didn't actually understand how to do it and I couldn't read German at the time. So I was just like scrambling around trying to figure it out. A minute after I had left, right? A whole group of people show up. None of them want to operate the lock. And I was like, oh, they're all gonna be stuck. What are they gonna do? Should we go back and help them? And then they simply got out of their kayaks and carried the kayaks along the hill. In the time it took to do that anecdote, I believe the water levels have matched, so I should be able to open uh, the gates now, which is really easy to do one-handed while holding a camera. And there you go. That's the complicated way of moving a boat from low water to high water. All right, everybody, so we're finally off that boat. And I tell you, my shoulders are killing me. I think on off, we were rowing for about six hours. I say we, I mean me. <laughs> Camille wasn't the best rower, but also she had to take a lot of that footage. So, you know, that was pretty helpful. That way I could focus on moving us through the water. <sighs> anyway, I'm pretty tired. So I'm gonna run back to the hotel and probably take 
maybe a quick lie down because I'm filming another video tomorrow. That's right, one weekend, two videos, let's go. And this one is gonna be a bit weird. I'm gonna want you to check it out. It might not be up for another week, so give me a subscription or a bell so you can hear it because you're gonna want to because tomorrow we're swimming with penguins. All right, everybody, so we're back in Munich after a pretty good vacation going through East Germany. We actually filmed more than just this video, so stick around and we'll talk a bit about them. But for right now, I know you're just dying to talk about Spreewald and the canals, so go on. Go for it. Yeah, so this is actually one of my most favorite day trips that we've ever done, probably for two reasons. As you may have been able to guess, I really love doing these sort of like outdoorsy, very hands-on activities. So kayaking through a beautiful forest and getting to go do some like cultural activities was really, really fun. Uh, the second reason I like this, because I think this is a really good example of sort of getting out of the city, but in a very simple way, right? Like getting from Berlin to Spreewald was really straightforward and simple. Um, and I say this because as you've probably guessed by what, if you've watched some of our videos, um, we're big fans of of uh, getting to explore sort of outside the cities. I read a lot of uh, people's itineraries, maybe on Reddit, maybe a little bit judgily, but I see a lot of people who will sort of city hop. Maybe they'll go to Berlin for five days and they'll take the train to Prague for five days and they'll take the train to Budapest for five days. And these are all great cities and they're worth going to visit. Uh, but I think you really miss a lot of the culture and how people live and what um, what living in that country is like when you skip the in-between portions. Right. Well, I mean, there's a lot of content mm -hmm. living in between these main yeah. kind of temple locations. It's actually why we made the how to put uh, together like an English itinerary. Uh, because I know a lot of people who just skip out on that one altogether. You know, they'll land in London like everybody does and then fly to Edinburgh. You've missed out on quite a lot. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to do, and that is why we like yeah. making these types of videos. Yeah, it's important to remember that the capital city or the main city in the region that you're in just isn't representational of really the people who live in that area or the country. It's representational of that city. Berlin's culture is unlike any other culture in Germany, for example. Yeah, so with that being said, though, what did you think of Spreewald? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I think it's fantastic. I think it's very malleable, and I think it's really high value. I mean, when you can find items like this to add into your itinerary, it's just a gem. Because with an hour there, hour back, no train hassle at all. You don't have to make any connections or anything. Leave from the Hauptbahnhof. Like, wow. Are you, all you have to do is that to get an entire day's worth of incredibly authentic cultural activity. That's fantastic. You know, we've had to work much harder for less, to be completely honest. And so I love it for that, I think that's fantastic. I think there's almost no excuse for people not to go if you're in Berlin and you wanna get kind of a bit of a day respite from the city. I also think for backpackers, it's on a good route. You know, if you are kind of tent poling between Berlin and Prague, maybe step, you know, take a stop in Dresden, Leipzig, here. And so there's a lot of options for you to kind of integrate it into your itinerary, very easy. And then when you get there, it's easy for you to enjoy it because you don't have to do the kayak if you don't want, if maybe even just an accident and you hurt your shoulders with your backpack or something like that. There's no worries about taking that tour. Usually I'm really judgy about guided tours, to be completely honest. I think they kind of, they don't offer the value they say they're going to. Uh, but this one really, really does. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, you get the same experience. It doesn't really matter that you aren't rowing the boat that you're right. sitting in. That's just personal preference about whether or not you want to row and operate the locks and kind of work up your, your appetite. Yeah. So it's fantastic. And uh, well, why don't you tell us about the videos? Yeah, so we were, uh, we alluded to this earlier, but we were actually in Lubina for two days and then we nipped over to Dresden for another day. So we've got another video probably in a week coming out where we covered the Spreewaltenbad, sorry, Spreewaltenbad, yeah. um, which is a giant sauna slash, what is it, like it's water, a water, park. water park. Yeah, there we go. It's a water park where you can swim with penguins next and get penguins. your wellness on. Next to penguins. They say with, but yeah, it's next. To so we'll, we're releasing a video in about a week on that, so stay tuned. And then maybe a week after that, we'll have our video on our special day trip that we did outside of Dresden. Yeah, we decided to do a popular hit around there. We'll be going to the Bastei mm -hmm. a common photograph to see on r slash Europe. <laughs> so, you know, stick around for that. If you want to see them, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified about it. And if you want, hit us up in the comments with any questions, concerns, or just a chat. And uh, other than that, see you in the next video. Bye.